Hello, welcome back to Vinyl Show and Tell. How are you all? Hope you're all doing okay. Plenty of digging and spinning, I hope. I know I have. So, weekend just gone a couple of days ago. Um, I returned to the South, uh, Southampton Record Fair. Um, I say return to, I have been going uh, several years to this. I say several years, we've been probably getting on for a good sort of 15, 16, 17 years on and off. Um, it's a very, very regular fair. I have to say, look, looking, looking at um, billings of record fairs in the UK, this is probably just about the most regular one running, possibly in the whole of the UK. It runs every month pretty much without fail, the last Saturday of every month. Um, but I can't think of any other fairs, certainly in the, at least in the south of England, that run that regularly. Uh, as I say, I've been going for several years. It's been in uh, loads of different venues. I, I remember it used to be in there, the Guild Hall, um, and it's changed. It was in university buildings for a while, and there was also a hotel. I think it was called the Star Hotel, or it might have been the Dolphin, proper sort of old school hotel that it was in for a few years. But it's now settled down into a gig or concert hall, whatever you want to call it, called the 1865. Um, it is a little bit off the beaten track, I have to say. I mean, I don't know Southampton that well, but it is. It is quite, this venue is quite tucked away, um, as you'll see from the footage coming up. But it really, I mean, it gets a lot of footfall, this um, fair. And this one in particular um, was absolutely packed. It was rammed. Um, a good, definitely a good thing. I mean, it was kind of difficult to navigate your way around, especially as your bag's filling up with goodies. But, you know, it's absolutely great for the vendors, of course. You know, they, they seem to be doing loads of business. I, I saw people, you know, constantly just, you know, waving records, wanting to pay for them. So, yeah, very, very good. Very nice atmosphere. So, like all of my finds video, I'm going to start off with a little bit of footage of the area um, and the fair itself, just to give you uh, an idea of what it is. Um, after that, we will go through all the finds and um, I'd like to do a couple of shout outs as well because this particular fair almost turned into a kind of South Coast uh, VC convention. Uh, there, were, there were a couple of meet and greets, so uh, I'll be going through those in a bit. So over to the footage. So you join me at the city walls. This is kind of right at the heart of the city centre, Southampton Precinct down there, a fair few more shops down here, so a bit more of a walk and we will get there. Right, here is the fair, a gig place called the 1865. I have to say, I always found this quite off the beaten track, really. Despite that, it gets plenty of footfall, this fair. Well, it normally does anyway. The last few times I've been here, it's got very busy. So the opening time is 10 o'clock and I'm pretty early. However, when I've been before, you can just stroll in early, start digging and no one kind of bats an eyelid. I'm hoping that's the case today because it is... It's January in the UK and it's chilly. If not, I'm gonna to have to head back and find someone to have a quick cup of coffee. So we just scoop through the car park. Oh, someone's unloading. Look, plenty of swag. Right, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can head on in. So I'm not gonna take you on a tour round because it is, Rammed, which is a great thing, obviously, good business, especially for January when times are apparently tough. But there we go, that's what we have. It's reasonably small, but plenty here. Okay, so I've finished in the fair now, so I'm just going to have a quick gander in here which is around the corner called Vanillo. There's pre-loved and new. And let's have a little look. And also part of the Vanillo store there's a vintage section. Now I have just been in here 
I didn't find anything, but just for information only, two doors down. And there you have it. So, a uh, very, very good day. Yeah, really enjoyed it actually. It's a really nice atmosphere in there. Really, really good. Got some great stuff as you're just about to see. Um, but I highly recommend it. it. As I say, it's on every month. But the actual, I mean, the, the organisers of the fair, USR they're called, they do, they do fairs all over the south of England. They do them in uh, Winchester, I think. Uh, Reading's a big one. I must get to that at some point. Bath, Oxford. So they're all over the place. So there, there's some really good vendors there. So, right. That's what you all tuned in for. Let's show some records. So first of all, uh, there's a stall there called Spencer's Record Barn. I've never seen them before, don't recognise them. Um, this is Steve Hillage with Open from 1979. I'm going to take these out the sleeve. I have to say I'm messing about with some new lighting, so to avoid the glare, I will just remove from the plastics as I show them. Um, I was particularly interested in this one because it's got this die cut, very fragile die cut sleeve. Don't know if you can see that. The inner, the inner sleeve here kind of opens out, hence the title. Um, but when I when I see these in general, because then it's not that rare, it's always damaged. This area always seems to be torn, or the whole lot is just ripped off. So I was pleased to pick up a very, very nice copy of this. Um, I haven't played it yet, a bit like all the records I'm just about to show. I haven't played all of them. It's two days ago and I've still got a backlog of things from late last year, would you believe? That's the way things are. But there we go. But I, anyway, I like Steve Hillage. I've got some of his earlier albums. Uh, it's space. It, he's a great guitarist. Space rock, I think you could call it. It is certainly proggy, psychedelic. Um, he's absolutely great, so I'm sure this one will be no exception. Wonderful. So I bought a couple from a very regular vendor there called Clive. Um, I know Clive has been mentioned before in um, other videos. If you check out Gatefold 33 in Paris Hilton, they talked about Clive before, and he's he's been there for years. I only knew I only learned of his name recently. I, I just I only knew him from his price stickers. I just always recognised him. <laughs> Um, and he's kind of the first stall you get to. He's always got plenty of stuff. But um, anyway, what I always tend to do is when I uh, visit Clive's stall is delve into his half price box because he's always got one hidden away. And I picked this up. Now this is a, a blind buy by Timbuk3. Now I say blind buy, it looks familiar. When I saw it, I was like, I'm sure I've seen that before somewhere. I don't know if someone here on the VC has shown this one before, but I don't know it, but it just looked familiar. And priced at £12, half price, so six, you do the math. I thought I'd, I'd uh, give it a shot. It's on the IRS label. Now, I haven't got anything on IRS. They are a label I've definitely heard of. I know there's some great sort of, you know, alternatives. Um, rock and post-punk and things like that from the 80s so uh, I thought I'd give it a try I can't tell you anything about it maybe in a future video when I do a weekend spins I will actually talk about what the music's like if you know it then let me know uh, also from Clive Stall I was really pondering over this but I'm, I'm glad I went for it I, I was wondering whether it was the right price but no it's good this is the uh, 1970 album by Vashti Bunyan called Just Another Diamond Day. Uh, naturally, this is not an original. Um, it was originally released on Philips in 1970. Uh, I actually had a look at the Discogs prices on this. Um, cheapest one for a copy in G condition uh, went for £850 recently. The highest one, £4,000. So uh, I'm never, obviously, never going to own it unless. I have the best charity shop find ever, or something like that. Anyway, this is a uh, 1970s uh, folk record. Very, very highly regarded, from what I gather. Very highly regarded. Again, I haven't heard it. I'm aware of it, but I haven't ever heard it. So, um, and I've had my eye on it for some time. Um, this particular issue is by uh, Adi Christina. I've no idea if it's official or not. But it looks all right. Gatefold sleeve insert, nice vinyl, lovely condition. 
So yeah, very much looking forward to playing that one. Dashed with onion. Okay, over to another stall. Um, I didn't catch the chap's name here. I didn't recognise him, but he was very, very friendly, very, very chatty indeed. He's a chap in Fairham, um, which is um, the town basically kind of equidistant between Southampton and here in Portsmouth. Um, but he has some great stuff. And it was all marked down. It was all reduced. So I thought, um, yeah, I thought I'd go for it. So first off, uh, we've got the Rotters Club by Hatfield and the North. This is an original on Virgin. Okay. And it's on, it's got the original red sleeve. Now, I don't know if it came with that, but apparently these all did. You can see on the lovely original Virgin label. Wouldn't it be great if Richard Branson had put that logo on the side of his trains and planes? I mean, that would, I mean, that would really be interesting, wouldn't it? We can only imagine. Anyway, I've got um, Hatfield's first album. It's not one that I've played hugely, if I'm honest with you. Um, they are part of what is kind of known as the Canterbury scene of prog. Um, experimental, kind of a bit of jazz rock fusion, lots of sort of fuzz organs. It's, it's, um, the first album I've got by them is, is very, very strange. Very, very strange. But, um, I'm sure this would be good. I it seems to me to be kind of like a super group in a way. It's got it's got members of Egg, Caravan, Gong, and they all came together on Virgin in the mid 70s. Um, according to the vendor who sold this to me, um, he actually went to I think they he went to see them a few years ago. I didn't know they were still around and touring, but they are. So there we go. Hat food in the north. Now. Without, sound, without seeming like I'm, I'm jumping on some sort of uh, bandwagon here, I, I was fortunate to pick this up for a ridiculously low price of £14, reduced from £28. £28 is not bad for this. This is Beck Ola by Jeff Beck, the recently departed and much missed Jeff Beck. Um, now, I bought a copy of this about two years ago, a really, really tidy original on Columbia, same as this issue here the one box EMI. Um, unfortunately when I played it, it played terribly. It was it it looked the vinyl looked great but it must have had some serious groove wear which is such a shame because it was full of distortion so I was a bit disappointed with that. Um, this copy doesn't look quite so good. The cover's a little bit tattier but the record itself despite having a few scuffs and marks um, doesn't look very played at all so I thought I'd give it another shot. Um, what, what I'm particularly impressed of, and I did say this to the chap, is the fact that, in, you know, the fact that we've lost Jeff Beck recently, the price hasn't been marked up. Um, because I can imagine a lot of online vendors doing it, and a lot of actual online customers buying it. I mean, when Bowie died, I couldn't believe the, the eBay prices, they were staggering what they went for for a good six months but um at 14 pounds for an original copy absolutely great uh <coughs> final one for the vendor again i'm not jumping on the bandwagon of people who are recently have been recently departed <laughs> specials i snapped this one up straight away uh this was 14 pounds so very reasonably priced it's a sort of normal going going rate uh, UK original on two-tone. I cursed myself, um, A, for not owning any in the first place before now. Um, I hang my head in shame on that. But when I uh, visited London back in November, the record fair, I saw one of these and it was £15. And I didn't buy it. And I, at the, even straight after, I was like, why? Why didn't I? I then started looking on Discogs at copies and I actually put a film in my basket. Then we sadly lost Terry Hall. All my, everything in my basket went and the prices skyrocketed and I was like, great, that's great. I've missed out on reasonably priced specials albums, but not, not this case. He's kept his price down and I'm very, very grateful for it. So um, again, I'm not jumping on any sort of bandwagon here for 
recently departed musicians who are dearly missed. Yeah, this is one I've definitely been after, so I'm very happy to pick it up. So, Neil, does it feel does it feel a little bit like 2016 at the moment? Do you remember 2016? We lost lots of musicians and other celebrities, but we lost Tom Verlaine, David Crosby recently, and last year there seemed to be a lot of uh, musicians passing away. It does seem like a um, sad and regular thing, but um, yeah, unfortunately that's the way it goes. If, if I decide to listen to uh, older music, we're going to lose them along the way. But of course they are dearly missed, dearly missed all of them. Right, this one, oh, I was delighted to pick this one up. You don't see these sorts of things in the wild. This is uh, Eyeless in Gaza, Caught in Flux. This is a, an original on Cherry Red. Now I knew that some of these came with a free 12 inch single as well and this one did so I was well happy. Um, I haven't played this one yet, I've got two others by Eilis and Gaza. I've got their first album which name completely escapes me and I've got a later album called Rust Red September, I think it might be their fourth or fifth album. Uh, the first record by them is really sort of jagged experimental post-punk. Late uh, Rust Red September sounds like a completely different outfit. It is um, much sweeter, more mellow, quite kind of uh, pastoral in a way. Um, I don't know what this one's going to be. This is I believe to be their second record. Um, when the uh, when I went and paid for this, the vendor looked at me and he was like, you found it. Oh, I was hoping someone would buy that. It was like he put buried treasure. He said to me, have you heard of them? I was like, oh yeah, I'm after this one. He, he seemed absolutely delighted. So uh, yeah, everybody wins there. So as I say, this is original on Cherry Red. That's a great, uh, a great kind of post-punk and new wave label. I think they, Cherry Red was named after the, uh, the Groundhog song off their 1971 Split album, I think. A little bit of information for you there. But yeah, fantastic. Normally I have to go on Discogs for things like this. You don't see them out in the wild. And from the same vendor, another great purchase. I was like, absolutely brilliant. This is £25 and a bargain. This is a certain ratio sextet on factory records. Now, there are bands that I've been aware of and I've been in the, on the hunt for this for quite some time. So I've got the original insert. There's the record. Oh, that's in one of these sleeves, I'll have to change that. Once again, you don't see this stuff in the wild. Po well, when it comes to post-punk, a lot of my post-punk I have to go online for. It's eBay or Discogs all the way, which I don't mind using as long as it's a fair deal and it turns up in decent nick, usually it's fine. But um, on Discogs, this is like a 40, 50 pound record. So to get it in the wild, in amongst just crates of very sort of random, random stuff, um, yeah, I was absolutely delighted. So, uh, yeah, it's original texture sleeve. Yet to play it, but from what I read, it's going to be right up my alley. Brilliant. Fantastic. So, finally, from the fair, I got this. I'm sure it doesn't need too much introduction. It's Pink Floyd's second record. So, briefly, I mean... <clears throat> I have got this, I've got, there's a double compilation album called A Nice Pair, but I really, I, I, um, it's like a reissue from the, um, double reissue from the 70s, I think they released it kind of on the back when that album with the prison came out, what's it called again, that one with the prison, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, I wanted, I was after a nice 70s pressing of this if you get an original 60s pressing they're either hundreds of pounds or battered so this is a nice early 70s pressing on columbia and a very very nice price the edit price at 30 pounds which i was happy to pay for but what i didn't see was there was 20 percent off so anyway went to pay for this and the chap said to me hello george i've never seen them before this chap he went hello george and uh, it turns out he is a YouTuber himself, a um, chap called Richard Warwick, um, who I've just subscribed to this morning and started watching his videos. So he is a brand new YouTuber, lovely chap. If, he's, if you see him at the fair, 
he'll probably say hello and he's got lots and lots of good stuff for sale. So I, had a, I was very pleased to pick that up for a very good price. Lovely to chat to him um, and I will put a link to his channel in the description below. So check him out because he is, he is actually very, very new in the last couple of weeks. So check him out, give him a like, give him a sub, you know what to do. Um, also there, um, Richard introduced me to um, uh, another customer called Martin. Um, Martin is also a YouTuber, uh, Martin's Vinyl. Now he actually, he did actually recognize me and I must confess, I do remember him commenting on one of my videos and I'm very sorry to say I didn't check his channel out. That has changed, I have subscribed and watched a couple. I'm slowly working my way backwards with his videos. It's like a great box set. But Martin, lovely chap, had a really good natter with him and towards the end as we were leaving. Um, his, on his channel, he likes a lot of the stuff that I like. So if you, if you like what I show, you'll like Martin's stuff. He's very much into his late 60s, early 70s, the blues, the psych, the prog, that kind of thing. The, the really good stuff. So again, I'll put, a link, um, I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. Please check him out. Um, and I also bumped into uh, Mike, PC31, Vinyl Policeman. Um, so I had a little chat with him as well. Um, fellow Pompey lad, although he doesn't live in Portsmouth um, any, anymore. He lives uh, kind of uh, more out in the sticks. But great to meet him. He's, a, he's very much a regular YouTuber. Um, he did encourage me to actually do the uh, 2023 vinyl tag, which I didn't do. Um, I kind of miss. I felt the opportunity was missed. However, he encouraged me to do it, so I might actually do a belated one in the next few weeks. We will see. Again, I'll put a link to him down below. Um, anyway, finally, I went to Vanillo, the store you saw in my footage, and I picked up from the new, brand new section of the shop. I bought a um, self-titled album by La Luz, or is it La Luz? I don't know. Fantastic band, absolutely fantastic band. Curiously, um, I got their previous record, which is called, is it Forgotten Frontiers? Oh, I've forgotten, I've forgotten the name. Right, it will come to me in a minute. But their previous album, I actually heard them playing it a few years ago in that very shop and fell in love with it. I ended up getting all of their records. Um, this band started out as a kind of garagey surf rock kind of band, but they went more into kind of like a dreamy psychedelic sound. I don't know what this one's like. Um, what's odd about it is, um, you see there, it's um, special mystery flavour. I don't quite know what they mean by that. Do they, are they, do they mean colour? Is it a mystery colour? Well, this one in particular, one of a nice kind of tangerine orange, translucent, which is rather nice. Mystery flavour though, I don't know what to expect, I don't know, sausage flavoured, beer flavoured, something that I might like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to taste it and try. Right, anyway, uh, that's all for now, so again, if you're watching fellow YouTubers, it was lovely to meet you, there are a few YouTubers I, who, who I know go to this fair that I didn't see, you know who you are, if you are watching. But um, yeah, as I say, I highly recommend a day out in Southampton to this fair. It's really, really good. Um, I need to get to the other shop there called Boohoo Records. I've never visited Boohoo, but I, I just simply didn't have the time. Um, and it is kind of on the other side of town. So maybe one day I'll, I'll get to go there. Uh, this will probably be it for my finds videos for a while. There's more videos to come, but... I've got to take my foot off the gas. I really have. I, I've bought so many and I've built quite a backlog up and I, ne I need to stop buying for a while. I need to actually listen to what I've got because it's getting out of control. I've done so well. I've had a field day with it all. So I think the next, certainly the next few months will be more um, talking about other things, showing what I'm listening to, things like that. So anyway, um, don't forget if you like what you see, give me a Give me a sub, give me a like, check out the other videos, not to mention the ones I recommend. So uh, that's all. Uh, take care and thank you for watching.